Hey everybody, Team Yemix here and today we are gonna talk about a problem what sometimes can make you putting your hairs out. But wait, maybe this little tutorial can help you to step up to the next next level. Skin tones often are the most wild problem in color grading, especially if we are dealing with multiple people in one shot. One Asian, one Western and one with dark skin tones for example. But wait, let's keep it simple in this tutorial and got them, let's start. As first you should switch to Aces color space. I assume you know how to do this. I run through quickly and jump over to our skin tones. One of our first steps we have to do is correcting the changed exposure if we switch to Aces. As you can see now we have very bright and almost clipping skin tones. We can fix it quick and dirty by lowering the dynamic range in the curves but I prefer to fix it by lowering my gamma in the primaries. As my second step sorry for breaking the rule to start with the lows, so I do now, I rise the lift a bit just to keep it clean and don't crash the blacks. Again, a bit of decreasing the gamma and we have good looking skin tones as a starting point. Now we try to bring in a bit more contrast, just a Bit and never forget to adjusting the pivot point. Yeah, this looks good to me. Maybe just a bit to the lift. Fine. First, of course, create a serial node, add a layer node, and I will add a serial node behind the layer mixer node just for some final adjustments. As always, the upper node is our background node. The button node is gonna be our skin qualifier node, which lays above the upper node. If you compare it with a layer based system like Photoshop. Okay, now jump to the qualifier panel and choose the eyedropper. But before we start, let's have a look at the skin tones. We have very bright parts on this upper side and very dark parts on the lower side. If we now select the skin in the mids, we should get a good range of the skin, but very much of the greens and reds in the image too. Because in Aces we have a much more tonality and that's 12-bit raw footage. Anyway, we can try to select the skin tone again by choosing another region. But as you can see, this problem stays. Okay, let's try to solve it by adjusting our qualifier. I start with the U trying to get rid of the greens. Then let's see what we can do with the saturation, trying to get rid of the most desaturated regions. Again, a bit in the U and at last adjusting the luminosity. Then let's try to get rise the clean black and then the clean white to make sure to really get all the selected skin tones. You know, increasing clean white closes holes in the part of the image you are isolating. If we play now the shot, we can see there's almost no flickering. Great job up to here, but it wasn't possible to isolate all the skin tones in one step. We lost the darker parts of the skin, but we will solve it in a minute. First, I want to try to make our qualifier a bit cleaner, increasing the blur radius a little bit and never forget to check your qualifier by playing your footage. Always keep track of your qualification and look for halos and hard edges and transitions. I will increase the denoise value too, that's too high, 
I can decrease it a bit again and again one more time trying to adjusting the use and saturation to improve our qualifier. Now it looks very clean and yeah, almost perfect. But if we want to separate the background from the skin by adjusting the gamma, for example, we have a look and you will see the problem. We already don't included the darker parts of the skin. You will see it by highlighting the selection of the skin node and you see this line and the big hole here in our qualification. Okay, I reset the background and now I add a second layer node above our skin node. And here's the trick. We are going to split our qualification into two nodes. One for the brighter regions, as we already did, and one of the darker regions. In this new node, we only try to isolate the darker parts of the skin and try to let this qualification overlap the qualification of the brighter parts of the other node. Let me run quickly through it and adjusting our qualifier and as always fill the U, then saturation and finally the luminosity as always in this order U, saturation, luminosity and repeat makes it easier. The trick is to overlap these two qualifiers a bit. That makes it easier too if we have to adjust the skin tone. Okay, this looks okay for me, don't care too much if we have some other parts too in this qualification. If always, it always depends on our footage. In this case, I would say it's okay. Now it's time to adjust our background a bit. I will do it by a simple adjustment of the gamma, just to demonstrate how easy it is now to separate the background from the skin. I go a bit extreme just to show you that our qualifiers works excellent, maybe a bit more orange in the game. Okay, let's have a look at our skin tones. As you can see in the vector scope, it already looks fine, but if you switch between the two qualifier nodes with the highlighted qualifications, we see a difference between the two regions out of our skin tone nodes. And we can simply fix it to bring it closer to each other. Let's bring a bit more reds into the darker regions. And finally, we can check our result by switching the two nodes on and off. Looks good to me. Okay. I hope I could show you a good solution to create great skin tone qualifiers in footage with a large tonality like in the Asus color space. And if you want to see more content like this, as always, please don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. You all a great time and happy new year. Bye.